looking forward to the status of television, you have to sort of separate out the content from the distribution. Essentially, the medium from a content perspective really hasn't changed that much. People just have a lot more choice and a lot more options. But from a distribution point of view, uh, of course, things have changed fairly dramatically. The fact that you can watch shows on your iPad or you can watch it from an internet stream or whatever, it's already significantly increased access to television programming. And that's benefiting companies like our, our company that are basically in the content business. The ideal situation is to put our content out there in every way that we can, but we want to make sure that every access point generate some kind of revenue for us. So when you stream from CBS.com, you're going to see advertising just the same way you do on television. In addition to that, now we're getting a share of these subscription revenues from Netflix and Amazon and these people who buy that content from us and they pay us a license fee for it. Another area that is opened up is interactive experiences in television programs. Viewers, when they watch television at night, they are also actively connected to the internet, either through a smartphone, an iPad, or a personal computer. So you can actually create a commerce with that interactive opportunity, both in terms of content and getting people involved, creating games around programs, but also in providing uh, interactive experiences for the advertisers as well. So. Right now, there are applications that when the ad comes on, you can now then hold your smartphone up facing the television and it automatically downloads a coupon into your smartphone. The coupon business is a $16 billion business in the United States. So that's a great opportunity for us and one that we're, you know, we're beginning to talk to advertisers about. In addition to that, the search has made television advertising more effective. Because now if, if my TV ad stimulates you to want to be, learn more about my product, you don't have to wait until you're in a store or you have to wait till you go to a dealer. Just pick up your phone and flash it on the screen and you've bought the product that'll be delivered tomorrow. And that's another $12 billion business that uh, the television content provider can participate in. We have all this intelligence now because of all the new sophisticated measurement research techniques. So for millions of people now, we actually know what they purchased this week and what they watched on television this week. And we're actually to now put that data together and for the first time tell an advertiser essentially that your ad on this program generated this much in incremental sales. And as we're showing that return on investment, more and more people are recommitting funds to advertising. And in the case of the, the marriage between social media and, and television, that is just beginning to be tapped into. We encourage people uh, to uh, engage in discussions of the programs, to carry the conversation beyond the telecast. Programs were canceled and then brought back because of viewer appeals. So it's becoming much more of a interactive experience, which gives us the opportunity for more commercial tie-ins and marketing opportunities. And the other thing that I'll say that's going to happen is that the television is going to become much more of an international medium. We now are beginning to introduce simultaneous introduction of television programs in the U.S. and around the world. In 2020, the business is going to be as strong, stronger than ever creatively, and the role of television entertainment will only grow. As I like to point out at conferences, people have always talked about the end of television uh, being near, and I have managed to spend 43 wonderful and fruitful years in a dying medium.